Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa, and today I'd like to give a quick tutorial on how to add GPS or Global Positioning System information into data logs. Now this could be suitable for use with something like our MW100 data acquisition system for mobile apps, or it could even be in a mounted situation where we have something like uh, RGX here mounted say in a truck that's doing portable data logging or it might even be a skid based system using something like our Stardom RTU that can do both data logging and control as well as show customized web pages. For the purposes of today's demonstration I'm going to use the standalone MW100 data logger which features a web interface as well as Modbus Ethernet and Modbus serial style communication. So I'll take a quick walkthrough on how to do this. Now to add GPS style information, which could be useful for kind of tracking the location of a skid or a truck, you need something like this. So let me kind of show you a product I found that's going to be useful in doing this. Now there's the cloud gate. It's made by option. It's a pretty uh, interesting device. It combines cellular communications with Ethernet as well as there's a Wi-Fi option and serial expanders on it. So this can not only be your kind of link to the outside world through the local cellular connection and it supports Verizon and AT&T and T-Mobile and generally anything that supports GSM style communications. It's a 3G device so it'll go ahead and do cellular. You could also do Wi-Fi and it also has a GPS antenna on it, which is very interesting. And the GPS positional information with the correct profile in it that's available from option will go ahead and give you the latitude, longitude, the altitude, as well as signal strength that's uh, coming in. And uh, even allows you uh, the option to go ahead and configure your unit via Modbus. It can also act as a Wi-Fi hotspot for local devices. So say you're something like a drilling rig and you're collecting WITS, uh, wellhead uh, information telemetry system uh, based data off a drilling system with the MW100. You could share it locally via Wi-Fi with some of the helpers. You could also go ahead and uh, share it cellular back to kind of the uh, mothership so to speak or corporate headquarters. And uh, locally you can go ahead and connect to your local network where maybe the MW100 is, maybe a uh, PC is. And then you get to this point here. And this is the kind of the web-based configuration. So just like the MW100 has a web-based configuration, so does the cloud gate here. And under provisioning, that's probably one of the first areas you're going to go. This is where you're actually going to go ahead and... Uh, Put the provisioning file that supports the Modbus plugin that I'm going to show you over here. So you'd go ahead and get that from option, and then you'd go over here to the plugin. And if everything's correct, what you should see is you should uh, see some of this information here. And if you're going to do configuration, then there's kind of a check here that you have that allows configuration over Modbus. And then that'll open up all these as Modbus holding registers and input registers for you to take a look at. Here's the main registers we're interested in, which is uh, longitude, latitude, altitude, your RSSI, which is kind of like signal strength, and then ECIO, which is another type of signal strength. Even has a nice little display down here that can kind of show you what GPS satellites you can see as well as your latitude longitude so this is great for troubleshooting so anyways that's kind of the web interface for the cloud gate fairly simple easy to use of course uh, there's all types of other things that we could go in here and explore but that's not really what I'm uh, focused on for this particular presentation so what we have here is our MW100 web-based interface similar to cloud gate you can go in here and configure the unit and the Items of particular interest that we're going to start with are uh, communication settings. So make sure when you're going to configure your MW100 that everything here is set to stop and hit apply. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to make the changes necessary. Okay, so we go to communication settings. 
And since we're communicating to the cloud gate over Ethernet to pull the GPS data, we want to go to Modbus Client, make sure this is enabled, and then set your cycle here, how fast you want to go ahead and log, and the rest can be set at default. Once you're done, hit Apply. The next place we're going to go is the Modbus Client number two. And under this, you're going to go ahead and put in the IP address of the cloud gate. Port 502 is standard for Modbus, so you can leave that as standard. And then the place we're going to go here is the Modbus client setting number three. Of course, every time you do settings, make sure you hit apply at the bottom. Okay, so what's been nice here about the uh, cloud gate, if we go back to it uh, quickly here, is that the addresses for latitude, longitude, their floating points, and they've been blocked together. And then the integer ones have also been blocked together. So we can take advantage of that in the MW100. So I'm going to do two reads here. So the first server is the one we set up on the prior page. The default unit number is 255 for the cloud gate. And the register that we're going to start at for the cloud gate is 30,001. We're going to pick float little data type. And we're going to go communication register 1 through 3. So this is going to read in the longitude, the latitude, and the altitude. Okay. And then we're going to do another read starting at register 30,007 integer type 16, and we're going to put those in communications register C4 or so C5, and that's going to be my RSSI and CIO, CEIO. Okay, so we hit apply. The next place we're going to go is we're going to go to channel settings. We're going to go to math channel, and we're going to go ahead and drop C1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in here into the math channels. For decimal places, we're going to pick the max decimal places available for the first three. So 444, four, four, and then just go zero for the next. And then we're going to put in our longitude, latitude, and our altitude uh, units. And then these are scales that are really kind of optional and up to you. It just depends on the range with which in your uh, product is uh, going to live. So in this case, I kind of said uh, minus 100 to basically 10,000 meters. You are limited to uh, eight total characters and uh, all nines for your upper uh, and lower limits. So I went and put in those and then same for my uh, signal strengths. I went in and put in some settings here. Okay, so once we have that, we're gonna hit apply. The next place we're gonna go is over to display settings and we're going to go to channel tag settings and we're going to go down to the math channels and we're going to go ahead and put in the tag names hit apply we're going to go over to display group settings we're going to create a group i called it gps info and i said channels a1 through a5 to correspond to the math channels i set up under other settings we're going to go ahead and make sure it's a uh, display by tag name and hit apply. Then the only other thing uh, I really think you might want to take a look at is under system settings. And part of that is your uh, math settings. And your integral group here is set to one. And your measurement settings, you get to set up three interval groups here. So the first integral group is 100 milliseconds. So make sure your math is at least calculating as fast or faster than how often you're doing your Modbus communication. So we're communicating at one second, so it's fine if we do the calculations every 100 milliseconds. It'll just ensure we have the latest data that's been pulled in from the GPS. Okay. So the next thing we'd go ahead and do is we'd go ahead and start these guys up, the measurement math, hit apply. I've already done that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, dual screen here. Now if you don't already have it you need to go to java.com and make sure you have a Java applet installed or the Java virtual machine because these guys here kinda need the Java applets in order to display properly. I'll show you another screen that doesn't require the Java but uh, we're gonna go ahead and right now it's connecting up to the MW100 and we can now see we've brought in our longitude, our latitude, our altitude, 
our RSSI and our ECIO. Okay, over here I've also got kind of an overview screen that I've gone ahead and uh, showed up, but I could go ahead if I wanted and replace that with a trend. Trend uh, might be interesting for uh, certain reasons. Maybe you want to do a little troubleshooting on your signal strength, stuff like that. And you can kind of see some of the values here. You can see they're fairly stable because I'm not uh, presently moving around. All right. You could also, if you had another set of uh, data, like your actual process data, you could have your process data set up over here, stuff like your temperature or, or uh, flow rates or other information. Under light monitor at the top level, this here doesn't require Java. So this might be another quick way of kind of bringing stuff up, maybe on a mobile device or something like that. So I kind of wanted to show you one more thing up here. If you uh, get your latitude and longitude, you could uh, go ahead and uh, go to Google Maps and uh, essentially pipe it in, and then it'll go ahead and take you to the location on the map. So that would essentially allow you to go ahead and track down where exactly the device is. Okay, so this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa, and this is how we can add GPS positional information into the data logging and control systems via Modbus, Ethernet, and uh, the CloudGate. So take care and have a great day.